فلقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we begin from verse number 1 to 12 of سورة الهجرات أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الزن إن بعض الزن اسم ولا تجسس ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أيحب أهدكم أن يأكل لهم أخي ميتا فكريتم وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ O those who believe, avoid much of suspicion. Really, some suspicion is sin. وَلَا تَجَسَّسْ وَنْ Do not spy at each other. وَلَا يَغَدَبْ بَعْزُكُمْ بَعْزَا And do not backbite some of you of others. Does wish any of you that he eats Lahma akhihi maitan, the flesh of his dead brother. Fakarih tumu, but you hate it. Wattakullah, wattakullah, and fear Allah. Verily, Allah is acceptor of repentance, Rahim, most merciful. Eh logo jo iman le aayo. Bohut guman karne se bacho. Baz, beshak baz guman, guna hote hain. Or na tum tajassus karo, or na. ریبت کرو تمہارے باز باز کے بارے میں کیا چاہتے ہیں تم میں سے کوئی کہ وہ کھائے اپنے مردہ بھائی کا گوش تم تو اسے گھن کھاتے ہو یا کراہت سے دیکھتے ہو اس چیز کو اللہ سے ڈرو بے شک اللہ توبہ خبول کرنے والا خوب رحم فرمانے والا اللہ سپیس ہو گیا نمبر ون اللہ سے اوائیڈ مچ آف سسپیشن always have a good opinion about everyone Always accept the fact that you are not perfect, so the opposite person also, you can't expect him or her to be perfect. Number one is, always have a good opinion about the other person, particularly a believer needs to have a good opinion about another believer. Point number two is, point number two is, do not try to look into the faults of the other person and start suspecting everyone. It is not wrong to suspect a little, but not too much. For example, you are employing someone or you are getting married to someone. There will be an element of doubt and suspicion always there. It's not wrong. But suspecting every person at all times and having doubts about somebody at all times, that is wrong. Looking at the face of the person, studying the body language of that person, there may be some element of suspicion and doubt, which is allowed, which is natural. Like in, but branding everyone and painting everyone with the same brush and forming opinions about everyone negatively, that is not allowed. That's why Allah says, Avoid much of suspicion. That means little suspicion is allowed, permissible, but don't exceed limits in that. Point number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not spy at each other. Where is he going? Where is he coming from? What does he do? Whom is he speaking to? What is there in his mobile phone? How much does he earn? How come he is earning so much? None of your business. It's none of your business. That lady, what she is, whom she is talking to, how does she behave with her family? It's none of your business. Be it a young girl, be a young boy, be it a man, be it a woman. You mind your business. Don't try to search for faults of others. If you do that, Allah will expose you. Tum dusron ke uyub ke piche padoge, Allah subhanahu wa taala tumare uyub ke piche padkar tumko expose kar dega. Ghar bete hai, hadis mein aata hai, in your own house. Let us try to identify our faults, our weaknesses. 
and try to get over them, get over, overcome them, and get them out of us, of get them out of our lives. हमारे खामियां क्या हैं? हमारे उयुब हम खुद जीते हैं। पहले हम इसको अपने जिंदगी से निकालने के हम जो है वो कुछ करें इसमें पूरी जिंदगी खत्म हो जाएगी। Try to be a perfectionist as much as possible and try to come clear out of all these all these type of sins and evils which may be there within us and nobody knows them better than you yourselves. We know our faults. Each one of us know what is our weakness and shortcomings. Let us look into that first. Stop bothering about other people. Bothering means in the sense don't be after their faults. Don't spy. Don't pry on their lives. Don't do that. Third point which Allah is mentioning is do not backbite. Sahaba asked the Prophet, what is meant by backbiting? Prophet said to speak ill about a person behind his back. That is, the person is not present there, but you're speaking ill about him. Sahaba then asked, what if that person had that weakness or that mistake in him which he committed? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that only called backbiting. If it have and still you are saying, then it is called slander. It's a big challenge to all of us whether we can even spend one day without backbiting about anyone. Very difficult. We sometimes do ghibat about our relatives, we do ghibat about our friends, we do ghibat about our neighbors, we do ghibat about someone we came across, someone we met. Once a bad odor, a gandhi badbo ai, sahaba ne Allah ke rasul ke saath khade huye the, ek dusron ko dekh rahe ki kahan se hai badbo ai. Once the sahabas were standing with the prophet and a bad odor they experienced, they were looking at each other. Prophet shall some said that because of somebody has backbited. Hazrat Maiz, Hazrat Maiz bin Aslami anhu, came to the Prophet and confessed that he committed adultery. After the Prophet confirmed with him, he said yes. And he asked the Prophet to pass the sentence upon him. Allah ke Rasul se unho darkhaz ki ke jo hai mujh par mujh ko saza de dijiye maine zina kiya hai. Allah ke Rasul ne ek se do baar, do se teen baar unko confirm kiya. Wo bole haan maine zina kiya. To Allah ke Rasul phir shariyat ke khanun ke mutabik stone to death. And the sentence was passed and he expired. While returning after the burial, Prophet also heard two persons speaking ill about or backbiting or speaking ill about that person who was stoned to death. And they said, Allah wanted to conceal his fault, but he himself has gone and exposed it, he exposed himself, and he has got stoned like a dog. Prophet Sallallahu heard it and didn't feel nice about it. After proceeding a little further, Prophet Sallallahu saw a dead donkey lying on the pavement. A dead donkey. Prophet Sallallahu called those two friends and said, go and eat that. You know, beloved Prophet, a dead donkey lying on the pavement and you're asking us to eat it? Prophet Sallallahu said, yes, please go and eat it because what you just now spoke is worse than that. And do you know, this Mayas, Mayas who has just expired and who was stoned to death on account of past the Sharia sentence on him, he is now swimming in the rivers of paradise. Do you know that? Allah ne inko gunah maaf kar diya aur unko jo jannat ke nehro mein uter rahe hain. Aur tum jo gitni ghanodi baat kiye ho, uske baare mein, ye murda pade huye gade ko khane se bhi jo hai, एक बुरी चीज है जो तुमने अभी किया है 
so this is something which is something which is very scary and worrisome because the scary part why i'm saying is because when you backbite about some somebody it's very difficult to go and seek apology aapne kisi ko bura bhala keh diya ja ke bol sakte hai bhai mere ko maaf kar do please forgive me and pardon me i spoke bad to you that day i did not should not have spoken in this manner i behaved with you in a manner which was not right i was used an abusive language or insulted you or disgraced you whatever please pardon and forgive me you can go and say but you can't go and tell somebody on so and so occasion i spoke ill about you behind your back you will be only adding salt to the injury so it becomes very difficult to even seek pardon and forgiveness from somebody whom you have backbited the only way if allah wants if you seek sincere repentance from allah subhanahu wa taala maybe he forgive you but the other way is very difficult because when you do harm to somebody until that person does not forgive and pardon you allah to doesn't pardon and forgive you and backbiting is something which becomes very difficult for you to seek pardon and forgiveness from someone because it is not practical in fact you will be only creating a bad relationship with that person at the same time let me also tell you that if somebody comes to seek an opinion about you about someone for example somebody comes and says i like to do business with so and so since you know that person can you tell me about him in order that i may take the right decision whether to take him as a partner in my business or not at that point of time you are supposed to give an honest opinion you cannot say no no i will not speak anything bad about him because backbiting this then come on the backbiting this is about giving your sincere opinion in order to protect that person from getting into some problems in future and if you hide the fact and not convey the truth before that person and tomorrow that person gets into some issue you will be standing accountable before allah please understand this point very clearly the very sensitive point which i just shared with you likewise if some person come and says i want to give my daughter in marriage to so and so boy do you know anything about that family or you don't know anything about that boy or what is he or what is his family how are these people etc etc because I, because a proposal has come from the uh, bridegroom side for asking my daughter's hand and therefore i want to know about that family then if you know anything about that family in an honest way you should convey it like how fatima bint khais radhiyallahu ta'ala anha came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asked oh beloved prophet so and so have sent proposals to me prophet said one of the person has a habit of beating his wife another has a habit of being very stingy with his wife so you take a call accordingly now that is not called backbiting that is protecting a person from getting into some problem or difficulty by you concerning concealing a fact which you are supposed to disclose and save that person from the problem or the pitfall but agar tumne khamosh reh gaye aur unko jo hai kuch sachai jo hai jo wo chahte the tumse jo hai ek rai aur opinion tumhari aur tumne nahi diya to khuda na khasta kal ka din wo koi problem ho gaya to tum allah ke samne jawab de thehoge kyunki tum jante the aur jaan bujh kar tumne unko bachaya nahi so all these are you cannot say let them go and do whatever they want i why should i speak anything no that's not the way you are supposed to protect your brother or a sister from any pitfalls or any difficulties they should not confront or experience or encounter in future so that is not called backbiting but when your intention is to harm someone to defame somebody or to create a bad opinion about that person in the society or among the people and you're doing it allah is watching the intention and that is why allah immediately after this says wattaqullah fear allah allah is watching you allah is watching and closely monitoring your intention and if any of these sins we have committed allah says turn towards allah and seek pardon and forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa taala for he is the acceptor of repentance ar rahim most merciful may allah protect all of us from all these kind of <clears throat> misbehavior or bad conduct or any of these bad habits in us and if we have committed them in the past may allah pardon and forgive us and protect us from committing any kind of sins in future amen ya rabbal alamin ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min zakari wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa khaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum indallahi adhqakum inna allaha alimun khabir o people o mankind verily we have created you min zakari wa unsa from a male and a female that is from adam al islam and hawa al islam wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa khaba'ila and we made you into nations and tribes litaarafu that you may recognize each other inna akramakum indallahi atqakum verily the most honorable 
among you near Allah is the one who is most God conscious among you. Inna Allah alimun khabir, verily Allah is the all knower, all aware. Hey, logo, Eishak humne paida kiya tumko ek mad aur ek aurat se. Aur humne banaya tumko kumbho, kumbhe mein aur khabilo mein taake tum ek dusron ko pehchan sako. Beishak tum mein se sab se zyada izzat wala wo hai Allah ke nazdik jo tum mein se sab se zyada Allah se darne wala ho. Beishak Allah khub jannne wala, khub khabar rakhne wala. Somebody is a black, somebody is a white, somebody is an American, somebody is an Australian, somebody is an Asian, somebody is an African, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everyone in a different, different manner, with different ethnicities, with different, speaking different languages, and having different looks, and having different colors. Some is white, some is a black, some is wheat complexion, some is extremely fair, some, but some is extremely black. These are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Why? So that you can recognize each other, so that you may know which continent you belong to, which country you belong to. All this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's system which he has established. For Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said at the Hajjatul Vida, the last sermon which he gave, the farewell pilgrimage, no black is superior to a white and no white is superior to a black. No Arab is superior to a non-Arab and no Arab, non-Arab is superior to an Arab. Yes, the most honorable among you is the one who is most God conscious among you. Prophet also said, Allah does not look at your personalities and your positions. Allah does not look at your personalities or your positions. Allah sees your heart and your deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tumhare suratun ko aur tumhare maal ko nahi dekhta ke tumhare dilon ko aur tumhare amal ko dekhta hai. How pure is your heart? How much of taqwa is there in your heart? How much of fear of Allah is there in your heart? That is what Allah watches. La yana lallahu luhumu wa la dimahu wa la ki yana luhu taqwa minkum. How much of taqwa is there inside your hearts? That is what Allah watches. And Allah sees your deeds. Allah says with what intention you have done those deeds to show people, to create name and fame or done only to please Allah. That is what makes a person most honorable in the eyes of Allah. The heart which is sound, a sound heart, which means a heart which is pure, pure from all impurities and a heart which has a lot of fear of Allah in it and those particular deeds done sincerely only to please Allah. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and that is what will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide to grant an exalted position to that person even in the hereafter and even in this world Allah will give dignity and honor and respect to such a person who has a lot of fear in his heart and who does a lot of good deeds to please Allah such a person is always held in high esteem in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not your, your personality and your way of dressing or your way of presenting and the way you show off yourself and etc etc and also the properties and the wealth that you own that is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers to be a person who is honorable, as we unfortunately take that only as a <clears throat> criteria or benchmark in this world to decide whom to give honor and respect is the person who is smart, who is very intelligent, and who has a lot of money and a lot, a lot of wealth. Only we respect. But another person is most unassuming, he may be very ordinary in his looks. He may not be very rich, but he may have a lot of fear of Allah in his heart. He may do a lot of good deeds silently. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you do not know. And the respect and dignity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives is that is actual dignity and respect. What the people determine is all temporal and they are selfish. They may do it only to please the opposite person, to gain mileage out of them. But actually in the heart of hearts, they actually do not give respect to that person, but they are compelled to give in order to please them. But true dignity and honor comes from Allah. And this is very, very important. Allah loves those people who fear Him a lot. Allah loves those people who do a lot of good deeds silently. Qalat al-Arabu amanna khullam tumin walakin khulu aslamna walamma yadkhul al-Imanu fi khulubikum wa intu tiu Allah wa Rasulahu Allah yalitkum min amalikum shayya inna Allah ghafuru rahim Said the Bedouin Arabs amanna we have believed Say not you have believed and but you say, Aslamna, we have accepted Islam. While not yet, while not yet has entered faith in your hearts, 
وَإِن تُطِيُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ And if you obey Allah and His Messenger, لَا يَلِبْكُمْ مِنْ آمَالِكُمْ شَيْعَ Not He will diminish of your deeds anything or not He will decrease the rewards of your deeds anything. إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُرُ الرَّحِمْ بَلَلِي Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. بَدُّ عَرْبُو نَي كَا هَمْ إِمَان لَا کہہ دیجئے نہیں تم ایمان لائے لیکن کہو ہم اسلام قبول کے جبکہ نہیں داخل ہوا ایمان تمہارے دلوں میں اور اگر تم اللہ اور اس کے رسول کی اطاعت کرو گے تو نہیں کمی کرے گا تمہارے عمل کے عجر میں سے کچھ بھی بے شک اللہ خوب بخشنے والا خوب رحم فرمانے والا ایکسپٹنگ اسلام is the first step but to have total faith in Allah and acknowledging him as your creator and acknowledging the attributes of Allah and Consciously accepting Allah as your Rabbul Alameen, that is strong, that is Iman. Just saying, Kalimah Shahada, Ashadu Allah, Ilaha Illallah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad and Abdu'l-Wa Rasulullah, you come into the fold of Islam. But when you consciously start feeling the love of Allah in your heart and you acknowledge the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you start, stop, and you start obeying Him and you start practicing Islam with all sincerity, that is where Iman plays a major role. And where will you get this strength of your Iman? From the Quran. From the Quran. The more you connect yourself to the Quran, the more you strengthen your relationship with the Quran, the more you want to become strong in your hearts. So when the Bedouin Arabs came and told, we have accepted Islam, we have accepted, we have believed, Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, still there's a lot to do for you. There's a lot, lot, lot you need to do to actually create faith in your hearts, which has not yet happened. So just say we have accepted Islam, but not yet the faith has entered your hearts. But if you obey Allah and His Messenger in all matters, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will strengthen your iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on account of this strong iman and the good deeds that you do, Allah will not reduce anything from it. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ سُمَّا لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا سُمَّا لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَ Summa lam yartabu, then not they have doubts and they strive hard with their wealth and their lives fi sabil Allah in the way of Allah. Ulaika humus sadiqun, those they are the truthful ones. Sirf iman wale wo hain jo iman laate hain Allah aur iske rasool par, fir nahi wo shak karte aur jiddo jahed karte hain apne maalon aur apne janon se Allah ki raah mein. Yahi wo loog hain jo sachche iman wale hain. So we need to be the truthful believers, the true believers. And how can you and I become true believers? Number one is to believe in Allah and His Messenger and obey Allah and His Messenger in all walks of life. Having total trust on Allah and faith in Him. Number two, you should not have any doubts of that. Number three is to strive hard in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your wealth and your lives. That is, a, devote your time, spend money, and strive hard in the cause of Islam to spread the message of Islam before the people, to spread the message of the Quran before the people, in helping people, in bringing people out of their debts, and to contribute to the good of the society. This is all with the sole aim of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put in your utmost efforts in doing it. Don't be selfish, don't be self centered, don't be self conceited. And those just won't be bothered about you and your family. Have concern for others as well. And this is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks forward. And those people who do this, Allah calls them as true believers. Say, do you inform Allah about your religion? Allah knows whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth and Allah will everything you all know. Kya tum agah karna chaate ho Allah ko tumhare deen ke baare mein? Kya tum khab dena chaate ho Allah ko tumhare deen ke baare mein? Allah jahanta hai jo kuch asmanon mein aur jo kuch zameen mein hai Allah hat chiz ko khub jahanta hai. Yamun nun alayka an aslamu khul la tamun alayhi islamakum. Bal illahu yamun alaykum an hadakum min imani in kuntum sadiqeen. They confer it a favor upon that they have accepted Islam. Say not you consider it a favor upon me or con confer a favor upon me about upon me on your accepting of Islam. 
by accepting Islam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred a favor upon you that he guided you towards faith if you are truthful. Sache. But if we do any good deed, let us not consider that we are doing any favor to anyone. We are actually doing favor to us. And actually, Allah has done a favor on to us by giving us an opportunity to, to do opportunity to do that good deed. When we do a good deed, we don't do anything to anyone. But we do anything to ourselves. We do anything to ourselves. What we do to Allah's favor. Allah has done a favor on to us. Allah has done a favor on to us. If you and I are sitting in the Quran class now, this is a great favor which Allah has conferred on all of us. And by coming to the Quran class, we are not doing a favor to anyone. We are doing a favor to our own self because Allah has given us an opportunity and we have used this opportunity. So actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done a favor to us and not we have done a favor to anyone. This is one point we need to understand very, very clearly. Generally, we do a little and make a big noise about it. And we think we've done a great favor to someone. No, you're not done any favor to anyone. You actually done any good deed, you have benefited your own self. And it's only Allah who has done a favor to you by providing an opportunity. That's it. And you need to be extremely grateful to Allah for that. Inna Allah ya'lamu ghayba samawati wallars wallahu basirum bima ta'amalun. Verily Allah knows the unseen of the heavens and the earth and Allah is all seer of what you do. Beshak Allah janta hai koshida chizhe asman aur zameen ke aur Allah khub dekhta hai joko tum amal karte ho. Alhamdulillah, we have completed Surah Hujrat. There's a lot of takeaway messages in this surah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to ponder and reflect upon all these instructions which Allah has given us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to put our best step forward to ensure that we inculcate and foster all these excellent qualities in us and stay away from all those evils and all those misdeeds which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has highlighted in this surah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to put it into practice, whatever we have understood. Allah accepts the hijrat from us. Inshallah, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. With another very powerful surah coming up, Surah Qaf, which central theme revolves around the hereafter and the Yom al Qiyamah. Very powerful surah, don't miss it. All these surahs which are now coming are all the countdown to the Quran, and they're all Meccan surahs, very powerful surahs. The language is also very of high caliber. You need to do a little homework carefully, and you need to be attending the classes regularly because these are the surahs actually which built the foundation of the Sahabas. Being the Meccan surahs, they were all the first revelations of the Prophet ﷺ in the early years of the prophethood. And if this could strengthen the Iman of the Prophets, if we also put in our best step forward and seek Allah's help, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will can strengthen our Iman as well. Inshallah, don't miss this. We have two surahs starting. Aqib da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallahum, abihamdi, kanashar Allah, ilahi illa anta, nastaghfiru kama tu bilik. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi